I'm sure maybe Divyanam Prabhu and Vrindavan Chandra Prabhu feel this, but sometimes you feel, okay, here we go again uh, through this uh, adventure. Um, and uh, sometimes you think we've already done this. We've already been there. We've already set the target and met the target. And now we're creating another target and trying to meet the target again. And we wonder, are we going to keep doing this? Just keep going through this again and again, year after year. But this is the uh, desire of Krishna. This is the desire of the parampara. This is the desire of Srila Prabhupada. And therefore it becomes our desire to continue distributing books year after year. I was just, I think one or two weeks ago, it was His Holiness Jaya Pataka Maharaj's Vyasa Puja. So I was watching and um, one of the devotees mentioned that Jaya Pataka Maharaj had received an instruction from Srila Prabhupada to distribute 10,000 Maha big books every month. <laughs> So you think like, okay, 10,000 Maha big books, that I can do. Every month, every single month, uh, you have to go, the counter goes back to zero and you have to hit 10,000 again. And you think, what kind of uh, vision Srila Prabhupada had? And then I thought, what kind of dedication Prabhupada's followers have to actually live up to that um, desire of the Acharyas? Just as when we read Bhagavatam again and again, it becomes deeper and deeper. Just like when we chant again and again, it becomes deeper and deeper. When we distribute Srila Prabhupada's books again and again, it becomes more and more mystically profound and profoundly satisfying. Um, sharing Krishna consciousness is a heart-to-heart -heart affair. It's not work. It's not um, just something we're doing uh, for some purification so that we can move on to some higher experience later on. Uh, this is actually uh, the most profoundly heartwarming and satisfying experience to share love by... Uh, giving love in the form of Srila Prabhupada's books, which help one to awaken love. Um, the, uh, um, sometimes people uh, wonder, um, well, let me, before I go there, let me say one other thing. Uh, we used to have one Sankirtan leader and he used to say, uh, you know, before we used to go out on book distribution, he used to like give everyone like the pep talk to get everyone like fired up to go out on the street. So his line was always work now, samadhi later. And his, you know, he very much taught us that book distribution was our duty, our, you know, our um, commitment to Prabhupada it was something we had to do even though it was difficult even though it was a sacrifice and I very much appreciated that and that very much helped me to develop a seriousness around book distribution but years later we had another Sankirtan leader and he would always uh, give us also a, a pep talk before going out but his wasn't so much a pep talk it was more inspirational talk and he would get all the devotees together and he would say, everyone, today we're going to go out and enter into Goranga's Leela. And when I heard that, I have to say, I connected with that more. That kind of more touched my heart. That book distribution wasn't simply a duty. It wasn't simply something that was a discipline. It wasn't simply something that we were doing because we had to, and it was good to get purified. But from his speeches, I understood that distributing books was an opportunity to enter into the Lord's pastimes here in the material world. Normally, when you think about entering the Lord's pastimes, you think about it as something we do after we leave this body. But he gave us that vision that by going out and distributing books, you are part of the Lord's pastimes here and now. 
And not just that, part of a very special uh, variety of pastimes that don't even take place in the spiritual world. He used to tell us that there's only one service you can do for Krishna here that you can't do in the spiritual world. And that's uh, sharing Krishna consciousness. So take full advantage because this is a very, very unique rasa, a very unique experience. So, um, as Divyanam Prabhu was saying, the world we're living in is so troubled at the moment. Uh, people are so troubled. And um, if we're honest, even devotees are also troubled. We are troubled. We look at what's going on in India at the moment and other parts of the world, and it's heartbreaking. Um, and therefore, we realize the world needs hope. Uh, and the world needs a bigger vision. Um, I used to go out on the street, and uh, once I was distributing books on the street, and there was a homeless person, and he had a sign. And the sign said, give me hope. And so um, some people were throwing in a few coins. Some people went over to Costa Coffee and bought him a you know, drink. Some people came over and gave some nice words. And I thought they all have good intentions, but what he's really looking for is hope. Will those few coins give him hope? Will that Costa Coffee give him hope? Will their kind words of comfort really give him hope and vision for the future? Um, I realize the only thing that gives hope is the spiritual vision that the Shastras give us because they open the doors to the world of eternity, the world of unlimited possibility. And uh, that's the hope that everyone looks for. When I was young, I always used to enjoy going to the ocean because uh, the beach and sitting in front of the ocean because I felt like when I was in front of the ocean, in the vastness of the ocean, in the unlimited depth of the ocean, in the complete magnificence of the ocean, everything in my life that I was worried about, um, anxious about, stressed about, Everything that was on my mind seemed to immediately become insignificant when looking at the, uh, the vast ocean in front of me. And so uh, the Bhagavatam is like an ocean. Uh, well, Sanatana Goswami says, Sarva Shastra Bhipiusha, Sarva Vedeka Satvala, Sarva Siddhanta Ratnadya, Sarva Loke Kadrik Prada. In this verse, he says that the Bhagavatam is not just ocean, the ocean is not just oceanic, it's actually the nectar which is churned from the ocean of the, all the scriptures. And so, just like I would go in front of the ocean and find that my life came back into perspective, I feel like nowadays when I sit in front of Bhagavatam and I open Bhagavatam, then life comes back into perspective. Uh, your worries don't seem that significant. Your fears don't seem that, um, don't make you that anxious anymore. Uh, you kind of develop a sense of peacefulness and a sense of equanimity of mind, despite whatever's going on around us. And so, this is what we're trying to offer people, a real solution, a real uh, hope, a real vision for a better future. Um, by giving the Bhagavatam out, we are changing lives. Where um, They say when you give a book out, you're not just giving paper, ink, and some words to people. But when you give a book out, you're giving people the opportunity of a whole new life. And so um, the Bhagavatam is a religious book for sure. It's the ultimate religion. Savei Pumsham Bharo Dharmo. 
Some people say, yes, this Bhagavatam, what is it? Is it a religious book? Yes, it's the supremely religious book. Paro dharmo, yato bhakti radok sajay, because it talks about pure love. Some people say the Bhagavatam, is it a philosophical book? Yes, it's a philosophical book. Vedyam vastava matra vastu shivadam. Because what does the Bhagavatam do? It distinguishes reality from illusion for the welfare of all. Some people say the Bhagavatam, is it a spiritual book? Yes, it's a spiritual book. Sadhyo ridya varudya te trakriti vi shushru shubhishtad shanat. Because when you read it, the Supreme Lord uh, becomes very much present and active within the heart. Um, yes, the Bhagavatam is a theological book. Yes, it's a philosophical book. Yes, it's a spiritual book. But ultimately, the Bhagavatam is the camp companion which will help you to navigate every single emotion, event, and experience that you go through in your life. And when we give people the Bhagavat Darshan, the, the, the ability to view life through the scripture of Bhagavatam, then they will be able to de uh, deal with any emotion, any event, any experience. Uh, in life, and so uh, yeah, as I'm as I mentioned, you know, sometimes we may think, okay, we we already distributed so many books. Why are we doing this all over again? We're doing it all over again because there's so many more people to reach, and there's so much more hope that we can share with the world, and so. Um, Yes, we did so many hundreds of sets last year, and this year we have to try and um, do more um, because that is the desire of Krishna, that is the desire of the Parampara, that is the desire of Srila Prabhupada, that is the desire of our current spiritual masters who are so dedicated, who have dedicated their lives to sharing Bhagavatam. And ultimately, we must also do this because it's the greatest need of the day in the world we're living in. And so uh, these are some words I wanted to share with you about the Bhagavatam, about why it's so important, um, about how as we become more and more immersed in distributing Bhagavatam, then Krishna will become more and more active in our life. Uh, Distributing books is not a one-off event in our life. It's not something we do at a period in our life. Um, it's something which is a constant thread throughout our life to keep distributing this knowledge because Mahaprabhu's instruction was very, very clear. Jare deka, tare kaha, Krishna upadesh, amara agyaya guru, anatare e desh. Whoever you see, whoever you meet, uh, throughout your life, just try and share the knowledge of Krishna with them. And in this way, um, connect them by becoming a transparent via medium of knowledge. So I'd like to thank all the devotees for really uh, taking it up. And um, I'm looking at the names on the screen and uh, I see here many devotees who uh, have been doing it year after year. Um, keep they keep coming back to uh, serve the mission um, and that's so encouraging that's so encouraging um, and as Divyanam Prabhu said we hope that we can uh, empower and engage um, and encourage many many more devotees to distribute books um, this is as relevant if not more relevant um, now than ever before. Uh, book distribution is not something of the past. It's not an activity that was effective at a certain point in time. Uh, it's eternally effective because it's the process by which, uh, as His Grace Vaisheshi Kapabu says, we plant the idea seeds within people. Um, the idea of a beautiful life, which is based around selflessness and pure love. So um, thank you to all of you and uh, wishing everyone the best in this transcendental adventure and looking forward to hearing all the stories and the experiences that everyone has. 
um, and, and I really hope that we'll uh, smash the goal as Vaisheshi uh, Kapu uh, and Divyanam Prabhu always encourage us to do. Thank you so thank, much. Thank, thank you, Sadal Prabhu. Before you uh, uh, stop, Prabhu, I just wanted to request you because uh, to sh because uh, even though a short talk without a story uh, from you is never complete. So if you don't mind uh, sharing that famous story, Prabhu, the recent one where you had the experience when you went away to France when meeting this young boy, um, that story so much resonated with me and I often think of it. So if you don't mind sharing that with many, because a lot of devotees probably were not on that call and they will be benefited, Prabhu, uh, to hear that story before we move over to Vindavan Chand, Prabhu. Recently, thank you, Devi Nampu. Recently, I was in uh, France. Uh, I hadn't gone out on book distribution because of the lockdown for, six, I think, seven or eight months. And so I was itching to get out. Somehow, by Krishna's mercy, we were able to go to France and uh, we were traveling around France. Um, luckily, the COVID was down at that time. And uh, we ended up in Strasbourg. So one evening, we were distributing books in Strasbourg. It had come to the end of the evening and uh, looking for the last few people who may want a book. Uh, it was dark, it was cold, um, the streets were clearing out, and in the distance I saw uh, a young African-bodied boy, so I approached him, and um, he was interested. He really uh, uh, kind of resonated with what I was saying, what I was doing, um, and then I asked him, uh, uh, what is your story? What are you doing here? Um, and he said, uh, uh, my parents are from, uh, I think it was Libya, he said. Uh, is it, yeah, Libya, I think. Yeah, Libya, he said. And uh, um, my parents passed away. My family has passed away. And uh, uh, basically, I, I only have one brother. So my brother... Um, he fled to some other part of Africa because there was a civil war in uh, Libya. So he said, when I was uh, very young, uh, 14, 15, um, I had no family. I didn't know what my future was. So I went to see my brother. I traveled across land and I met him where he was in some other place in Africa. And he, I met him. And he said, uh, there's no future for you in Africa. So you may as well try to go on one of these boats and go to France. So he said, when I was, uh, you know, some time ago, I jumped on a boat with no money, with no, not knowing anyone, uh, incognito, of course, illegally. And he jumped on a boat in Africa, sailed across, and somehow or other made it into France. And uh, here he was in France, 17, 18 years old, no money, no contacts, no one, you know, to help him, uh, trying to build a future for himself. So I asked him how he ended up in Strasbourg. So he said he had hitched hiked to Strasbourg and he had some friends here. I said, where will you sleep tonight? He said, uh, I'll sleep in a friend's house. I have some friends here. And I said, where will you sleep tomorrow? He says, tomorrow, I don't know. Tomorrow, something else will happen. He looked at me, he said, my life is so unpredictable. He says, I am a non-entity in this world. He said, I have no family. I have no passport. I have no job. I have no plan of a future. And he said, every day I'm here on the street. And he pointed out, he said, look at that policeman there. If that policeman comes up to me right now and asks me what I'm doing, I could be on a boat straight back to Africa. He says, I don't even know where I'll be tomorrow. And in that moment, uh, all of my problems, all of my anxieties, all of my fears just kind of felt really insignificant. I left, I uh, 
reached out my hand and I gave him the book and I said, I can't give you maybe so much practical help, but uh, here's a Bhagavad Gita. So he took the Gita and he was very, very appreciative. And then in my heart, I felt I should give him some money. Generally, book distributors, they're, not, they're there to collect money. But I felt in my heart, I should give him some money. So I was reaching into my pocket to give him some money. And before I could even do that, he reached into his pocket and he gave me whatever money he had in his pocket. I, I said, no, no, please, you don't have to give me this money. Your life is, he said, this is love. He said, you are out here. You're not doing this as a job. You're not doing this for work. You're not doing this because you're going to get something from it. You're doing this because you believe in what you're doing and you know this will create goodness and love in the world. And I can feel your love. Therefore, out of love, I want to give you whatever money I have. And he said, people will look at us and think this is some kind of business transaction. But this is not a business. This is love. And in that moment, I felt that Krishna was speaking through him, telling me uh, what book distribution actually is. It's not a transaction. It's not a hard sell. It's not a business. It's not work. It's not something that we do because we're going to get something out of it. Book distribution is about love. And as I was walking away from him, I asked him, what keeps you going every single day? He said, I know God will protect me. And I know that you coming today and giving me this book is part of God's protection. So I have nothing to fear. And therefore, whatever may happen, may happen. But uh, he had that faith. And so when we go out on book distribution like this, uh, it wakes us up to reality. It wakes us up to um, the real meaning of life. And it also wakes us up to how much people go through. And when, we, when our hearts are softened, by what we experience when we meet people. Oftentimes we may not cry in a kirtan, we may not cry in front of the deities, we may not cry when we read the Bhagavatam, but when we go out and we see and we feel that karuna ras, that compassion, sometimes it can bring tears to your eyes and the heart becomes softened. And with that soft heart, we can actually then perhaps uh, approach Krishna with some love. The book distribution uh, is all about love. And uh, as we go out and do it, we uh, really experience this love. Hare Krishna. All oh, glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much. All oh, glories to all of you. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Thank you Sudhava Prabhu, for, for that uh, wonderful icing on the cake at the end. That was a really nice story. Um, and I pray and hope we get an opportunity to not only just do an online book distribution, but as the lockdown eases, to hopefully meet some people this time and, and go out um, uh, as, as the summer comes closer, uh, Prabhu. So thank you, Sitava Prabhu. Vindavan Chan Prabhu will shortly be presenting a 10-minute plan with everybody. So we'll request see if you could be, stay there for that so you can see it, uh, endorse it. So I'd like to welcome Vindavan Chand Prabhu next. Uh, so Vindavan Chand Prabhu, uh, again, does not require an intro introduction because everybody knows him in the community. Prabhu has been serving in in the society, International Society of Krishna Consciousness uh, over 30, 32, 33 years now. Um, Prabhu uh, lives in Hamel Hampstead with his wonderful family. Um, he's been heading the Gomatsya project, uh, the mission of which project is to do a distribution of Srila Prabhupada's Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrita sets. Um, it is, and the idea is the mass distribution through preservation and education. That's our mission. And part of that mission is this campaign called Bhadra campaign. Um, and we are very happy to be working with Vindavan Chand Prabhu under his able leadership. Many, one of, many of us, myself, Keshav Gokulanand Prabhu, 
Um, many, many devotees are here, Hema Mataji, many, I mean, it's uh, Divya Gorangi Mataji, everybody for years we've been working together. And so I'd like to welcome Vrindavan Chan Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu, uh, for strategizing everything and putting a plan together. So please bring the plan uh, to everybody, after which Vrindavan Chan Prabhu will also be inviting few devotees to say few words um, um, in how you feel about uh, this campaign uh, or, or the ideas which have been put out uh, and share how you could help and support in this wonderful initiative to please Srila Prabhupada. Over to you, Vrindavan Chan Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Divyanam Prabhu, Hare Krishna, Sutapa Prabhu, um, Hare Krishna, dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances, Vancha Kalpa Turu Bhyascha, Kripa Sindhu Bhyavacha, Adita Nam Pavani Bhyavaishna Vibhyana Muna Maha, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale, Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namani. Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharini Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Prasadachari Shatarini. So thank you for <clears throat> coming together today. I was looking at all the, the names of the devotees. Simply looking at their names, I feel purified uh, because all of the wonderful devotees are I. in attendance today are, are glorious souls, glorious uh, soldiers in the army of Srila Prabhupada spreading the mission of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, Sutta Prabhu just spoke so beautifully, uh, listening to him, I don't know, I, I felt a lot of emotions. Practically every word he was saying was just resonating in my heart um, about, you know, the service of book distribution, about uh, distributing transcendental knowledge. And, you know, the, the service, of uh, distributing Srimad Bhagavatam is a very special service. Uh, personally, in my life, I have various services, but somehow or the other, I always consider the service of distributing sets of Srila Prabhupada's books, uh, you know, my main service and a very special service. And uh, I thank Divyanam Prabhu. About four years ago, we moved after about 17 years being in the UK, we moved to Bhaktivedanta Manor. And uh, when I came here, I, I was looking for service and I was speaking to different devotees, you know, please engage me, please engage me. And somehow or the other, it was just not working out uh, to being engaged in some sort of service. And I felt somewhat despondent. And then I saw Vaisheshika Prabhu do a presentation on the Badra campaign. And uh, he introduced Devinam Prabhu. And uh, I, I contacted Devinam Prabhu. I said, you know, this, this service you're doing, would you like to, or can you please engage me in the service? And uh, he was so welcoming. Uh, it was a beautiful exchange we had. And somehow or the other, I became um, engaged in this service of distributing sets of Srila Prabhupada's books. And um, the overwhelming feeling I have being engaged in the service is that, um, is that I am part of something much bigger. The Lord has his plan, Srila Prabhupada has his plan, and their plan is, is already going to be executed. Somehow or the other, if we can just fit into that plan, then we become um, swept away. In a, in a beautiful and wonderful spiritual experience. Uh, you know, time and time again, every Badra marathon, you know, we've, we sort of set goals and uh, we embark on this path and the, and the beginning there's trepidation, there's anxiety, you know, how to do, how to do. But every year, some or the other, it all comes together. And, and the more I become involved in the service, the more I can see this, you know, and um, therefore when it's time for the Badra campaign, there's, a, there's an excitement, there's butterflies in my stomach and suddenly everything seems to come alive again. You know, in between the marathons, you have your life and you're going on and you're doing your sadhana, but there's something missing. But when you become part of this wave of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's and Srila Prabhupada's mission, then there's a special dimension and element that enters your life. And, and, I, and I, I anticipate 
just looking at all the devotees' names here, that all of you will have to some degree or the other the same experience. So, you know, Srila Prabhupada um, always, uh, Yudhi was asked, you know, during his last days, how will this ISKCON, how will this Is ISKCON organization uh, go on after his departure? He mentioned two words, organization and intelligence. So today I just want to speak a little bit about, you know, some of the organizational thoughts we had for this campaign. And uh, as time goes on, also to get your, your thoughts and ideas on how we can, can move forward on that. So I'll, I'll do a little slight presentation. Um, so every, every campaign needs to have a theme. Uh, and uh, the theme for, for this year is go to Goloka. Now, some of you all uh, immediately identify uh, with this theme, and maybe for some of you all it's new. The idea here is, uh, anyway, I'll, maybe I'll just get back to that later. And uh, we want to, you know, the mission of our entire movement, going all the way back to Srimati Radharani, is to bring more and more people towards Krishna's lotus feet, the Lord's lotus feet, and to give the Lord more pleasure. And, uh, you know, the mood of a Vaishnava is like that. You know, let's bring more and more people to the lotus feet of Krishna because that's very pleasing to the Lord. And when Krishna is pleased, everyone becomes pleased. So this year is a very special year, as Devena Prabhu was mentioning. It's the 125th appearance anniversary of Srila Prabhupada. And on such special occasions, the follower wants to do something very special to please the Acharya. Uh, we all know that Srila Prabhupada gave his life to spread Krishna consciousness. And uh, my constant meditation when I think about distributing Srimad Bhagavatam and the Badra campaign um, is how Srila Prabhupada only rested for two hours. And he would get up in the early hours of the morning and he would translate. And, and as time goes on, many of us realize how important that rest and sleep is to keep the body going. Uh, you know, more and more scientific evidence is emerging that to maintain a healthy life, one has to have adequate rest. So essentially by dedicating his life to giving the world the Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Prabhupada sacrificed his life. And in honor and appreciation for that sacrifice, especially on his 125th appearance anniversary, you know, we as followers, we have to meditate on how we can, we cannot pay back the spiritual master. Shri Prabhupada says in one purport, it's a joke to think that we can ever pay back, but we want to show some appreciation. Shri Prabhupada's uh, desire was very distinctly expressed uh, in the statement. I want that every respectable person has a full set of Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrita in their home. That's the very explicit desire expressed by Srila Prabhupada. There's no ambiguity there, it's straight. And as followers, you know, we should be wrecking our brains on how do we make this happen? How can we become instruments in this happening? And, uh, you know, this should be our constant meditation. Um, you know, we can only reach this point when there's mass distribution. Every home having a set, that's mass distribution. We have, although we have year on year been increasing the number of sets we distribute, we haven't even touched the surface. We have a long, long way to go. And this is going to take many generations to achieve. But every generation should always meditate and see it as an opportunity. How much can we do to Work towards that goal. And that's our mood. Let, let's do all we can uh, to become one step, even an inch closer to what Srila Prabhupada's desire. Uh, over the years, you know, coming from the, the topmost leadership within ISKCON, this has been a constant meditation. And for, uh, for many years, Srimad Bhagavatam has never been on the top of the bestsellers list. Selling and distributing Bhagavatams has been more incidental uh, than anything else. But many of the leaders wanted to change that. And over the years, uh, this brilliant idea emerged from His Grace Vaisheshika Prabhu, 
uh, latching onto this verse from the 12th canto, 13th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam, where if on the full moon night of the month of Bhadra, one places on the golden throne, the Srimad Bhagavatam and gifts it, yeah, that person will attain the transcendental destination in the next life. So that's the history of the Bhadra campaign. You know, in this age of Kali, people want, for a little investment, they want high returns. So, you know, simply by, by gifting Bhagavatam, one can get the highest return. Why not? As they say, it's a no-brainer. So using that theme over the years, it's been very successful. And uh, there are some statistics, uh, unimaginable number of sets, you know, uh, we've been distributed. We thought, you know, 7,000 was unbelievable. But last year, during a pandemic, the world distributed 24,000 sets of Srimad Bhagavatam. Unheard of. Anyone, if everyone involved in that campaign just knew the Srila Prabhupada's magic is, is manifesting. And every year we want to do more and more. So this being the <clears throat> 125th anniversary for Srila Prabhupada, Global goal is 25,000 sets of Srimad Bhagavatam. And uh, a few years, a few weeks ago, we had the global meeting to discuss this goal. And um, the moment you commit to the goal, uh, then that's when everything starts. So 25,000 sets of Srimad Bhagavatam. So we had Bhaktivedanta. Bhaktivedanta Manor is one of the biggest uh, centers in ISKCON. Uh, it's one of the three biggest, I've been told by devotees, one of the three biggest centers, most prominent centers in the world. So being one of the most prominent centers, we also have to do something to demonstrate that or to reflect that. And uh, last year, correct me if I'm wrong, Devina, probably just to be something like 335 sets of Bhagavatam. 333, three, 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 Prabhu, yeah, 333. Three, three. 300. And 300 was our goal, yes. 300 was our goal. So this year we got a goal of 400 and um, we want to achieve it. And uh, I, I'm i confident we can achieve it. We want to smash it with our engine. We want to smash it. I'm thinking 1,000, just for Bhaktivedanta, Manu Divinam Prabhu. Although the goal, goal for Europe is 1,000 sets towards 25,000 and our contribution is 400. But we want to offer something special for Srila Prabhupada. And uh, we invite everybody to purchase the Goloka ticket, uh, the ticket to Goloka. All it requires is a commitment. I am on board. I am on board and the ticket comes automatically. And um, our strategy for this year is a fourfold strategy, engagement, events, promotion, and logistics. And I'll briefly explain each of them. Engagement at Bhaktivedanta Manor over the years, you know, Bhaktivedanta Manor has, has topped the European Sankirtan scores a year on year. And it's based on a very, very simple philosophy, less from more. Uh, we, we have a, one of the biggest uh, communities in, in Europe and in the Western world at Bhaktivedanta Manor. And a wonderful community of devotees. And instead of a few devotees, trying to really work very hard to distribute. If we get more devotees engaged doing a little bit, uh, it becomes, uh, um, the goal becomes much easier achievable. So our goal for at least the 400 this year is to get 400 devotees, 400 members of our community, each devotee community committing to distribute one set, just one set. And, uh, we're going to have a couple of months, four to five months to distribute that one set. So the focus uh, for the next two months till the end of June is to sign up these 400 devotees. So in one sense, it's quite easy. Everyone has uh, various contacts and circle of influence. Take your piece of paper, list everyone that you know, uh, and then see how you can get them to to come to become part of this mission to distribute one set. And we have many, many wonderful groups, have very powerful energetic groups. We have, you know, reading groups, we have Sangha groups, we have university Krishna societies, we have Pandava Sena, we've got Sankirtan forever. So many of these groups. So 
in the first instance, we would like to get all of the leaders of these groups, every member of this group, to become part of this commitment. My offering for Shila Prabhupada on this year, I'm not sure what to do, but I've been presented with an opportunity. I'm going to embrace it. One set of Srimad Bhagavatam, and that will be very, very pleasing for Shila Prabhupada. And the strategy I said is first is engagement and second is events. And the idea of the events is twofold. One is to increase awareness of the campaign. Two is to create opportunities that the devotees are committed to do one set that they can tap into. Uh, just to give you one example, uh, if, if someone's committed to distribute one set of Bhagavatam and, and they're feeling bewildered, you know, what to do? How, how am I gonna convince someone to to sponsor or take a book. We're going to create various events, you know, uh, classes on the Bhagavatam, uh, movies on the Bhagavatam, um, speakers on the Bhagavatam, um, book fairs, uh, raising children, seminars on the culture of the Bhagavatam. Um, yeah, yes, we're going to create a number of events. So if you even if you feel a bit shy, you'll just say, you know, the devotees are showing a very, very special movie on the greatest, the cream of all Vedic literatures called Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, would you like to uh, have a attendance to this movie? Oh, yes, yes. Okay, next week, Saturday, six o'clock in the evening, you can join us. So the idea is, uh, Vaishya Shika Prabhu says, book distribution must be fun and it must be easy. When we have this, this feeling it's fun and it's easy, everything becomes wonderful. I think Devina and Prabhu, I'm maybe going a bit over time, so I'll just speed off. This year, the promotions, we got a new printing of Srimad Bhagavatam, a beautiful, beautiful uh, set printed in Germany in top quality paper, uh, a, a, a wonderful size. It's not a big size and neither it's a small size, but it's something in between. And I'm just waiting to, to, to place my hand on, on this deity of Krishna in the form of the new set, Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, and it's going to be very, very competitively priced at 175 pounds. We'll also look at what we normally do uh, to you know, give people, if they cannot afford it, to over spread over three payments, but it's very affordable. And then we also have limited stock this year of the Golden Thrones. So we have a wonderful promotion. So the timeline of events, starting off in May, the focus is going to be on signing up 400 members, raising awareness, uh, planning all of our events, again, continue the same theme into June, and start July, you know, really get all the events to kick in, get people inviting, get the buzz, get everyone completely mobilized. And we're hoping as once everyone distributed their one set, they think, why not more? Why not two? Why not three? Why not 10? Why not 100? Uh, when they get the taste. So the next actions um, is to, to really get everyone and the leaders especially mobilized and signing up the devotees. I would now like to uh, hand over to Divyanam. We have some of the leaders, our Maharatis, the devotees who do all of the, uh, the real hard work in distributing Srimad Bhagavatam. We would like to invite some, one or two of them to speak. So, Divinam Prabhu, maybe you can. Uh, sure, Prabhu. Take thank you so much, Vindavanshan Prabhu. Just one thing I wanted to add. Thank you for the beautiful presentation, Vindavanshan Prabhu. So, in that uh, circle of the wheel you saw, we also have mentorship system. I wanted to mention, which uh, um, again um, today will be represented by Mukunda Hari Prabhu, uh, who's. Uh, not only just representing mentors, um, but he's doing many other services. And uh, book distribution is one service which naturally he feels inspired. Nobody has to really inspire him. He's always ready. Uh, be, I think he's a great example among our mentor community, I have to say. So we are very privileged uh, to have Mukunda Hari Prabhu with us today to share just few thoughts, few words with us on his um, uh ideas of how we can work together and, and his experience of last year uh, with the Badra. So Bukund Hari Prabhu, if you don't mind for two to three minutes, share something with us. Uh, and, and, and we look forward to your support like last year, Prabhu, in working with the mentorship system and bringing everybody together on this idea of 400 devotees. Over to you, Mukund Hari Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Divina Prabhu and Vindavan Prabhu. 
Uh, thank you so much. Uh, my, my obeisances to all the wonderful devotees on the line. Uh, so thank you so much. Yes, so I, um, historically, I've been always engaged in some sort of book distribution, mainly through our Sangha group, but uh, used to be just mainly for the uh, December Marathon. And fairly low key, really. But uh, uh, I met Divinam Prabhu during our uh, Bhakti Vaibhav course. And uh, since uh, our sort of acquaintances got deeper, we, I got more involved with the, with the campaigns with book, book distribution. And uh, the last couple of years, I've been, uh, it's been really wonderful being part of this, this whole team and the campaigns. And uh, just amazing. Yes, so thank you so much for, for engaging me, uh, Deepa. Um, yeah, so once again, it's time for Badra. It seems like only yesterday we were uh, speaking about the different teams and the competition. We had wonderful spiritual competition between, between different teams. And, and I remember with my team, we, we started off with uh, seven members and two of them sort of dropped out pretty soon afterwards. The others were wondering how we will do it, what we will do. And in the end, how just Krishna's arrangement, Prabhupada's mercy, and we not only reached our target, we smashed it by, by a long shot. So it was just amazing. So, so the first thought I have, obviously from my experience last year and previous years, is that we just need to get on board. That's all. We just need to get on board. And it's not us. Krishna and Prabhupada will make things happen. We just need, we just need to commit ourselves to the cause. That's all we need to do. And leave the rest to, to Krishna. It will happen for sure. So yeah, amazing time last year. We're looking forward to this uh, this, this this campaign. This campaign on, on the surface seems much easier actually, like when Chandra Prabhu mentioned, less uh, more from less, or less less from more. Yeah, more from less, rather. So that seems you know, before we were like, like we were thinking about 25 sets or whatever we had to do now. For one person to find one other person who can either invite Bhagavatam at home or sponsor one. And we've got four and a half, five months to do it. It seems like a real total. So I think it's, 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 it's very simple, very encouraging. Everybody should be able to do it quite easily and not just one, but multiple sets. So it is a chance for all of us to get engaged in this uh, wonderful service, which is which is one of the most pleasing service for Shri Prabhupada. Shri Prabhupada used to sometimes, often he used to be ill uh, and, and uh, out of energy, he would be lying in his bed. But whenever somebody came to him with news of some numbers, book distribution numbers, he would just sit up on his bed and he would be full of energy again. So we know for sure that this is one service. Of course, all the services are very, very pleasing to Prabhupada and Krishna, but this is one service that really, really pleased Shri Prabhupada the most. So this is our chance to get engaged in this service, especially in this special year of the 125th um, anniversary of Shri Prabhupada's appearance. So my, my, my plan, uh, well, not my plan, can't be my plan, Krishna's plan, but uh, what my effort will be uh, to use the mentorship committee and the mentorship groups this time of course, with the help of the, all our team, team members, to reach out to each and every one of the, uh, the members of the system. So we've got around 350 mentors, maybe 350, 370 mentors, mentees in the system. So, so if each one of them comes on board, committing to just one set, we're already 90%, 80, 90% to our, to our target. So I really sincerely, We'll make that effort with the help of everybody else and the committee members of the, of the mentorship team. And we will uh, find ways to engage deeply with all the members of the mentorship committee and, and get them all on board and hopefully make this uh, uh, a wonderful and, and most successful year for the Badar campaign. Thank you so much. I'll just before I, I finish, I just want to read one of the uh, verses from the uh, Krishna Leela Stava of Sanatam Goswami, who talks about the, the Bhagavatam. Paramananda Pataya Prema Varshakshadayate Sarvada Sarva Sevyaya Shri Krishnaya Namostume. I bow down to you, 
who are supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema, prema varsha akshayate. You can always be served by everyone. You are Shri Krishna himself. Shri Prabhupada ki jai. Thank you so much, Mukunda Hari Prabhu. That was very, very encouraging. Um, I, I feel now what Vrindavan Chand Prabhu said, the goal may look 400, but 1,000 is possible, especially with the mentees on board. Anything is possible. And I think that will be really pleasing to Srila Prabhupada in this very special year. Thank you, Prabhu. So um, we, we just have a few more speakers. Mother Vishaka, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we are about uh, running slightly late, five, 10 minutes, but we wanted to invite few devotees as part of this presentation. So I'll, uh, I'll just be moving on to uh, three more devotees for two minutes each. So I would like to now invite uh, Yamaneshwari Mataji. She very kindly accepted uh, my uh, invitation to come and speak uh, for a couple of minutes all the way from East London. Um, Mataji is always available, especially when it comes to book distribution. That's one service. Uh, Mataji and her whole team is always standing ready to help. So thank you so, so much, Yamaneshwari Mataji. Uh, a great year last year working with you and Ashish Prabhu and all the devotees. And we hope to have the same cooperation this year. So like to hear some words of encouragement from your side, Yamaneshwari Mataji. Over to you. Thank you. Hi, Krishna Prabhu. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. And my respectful obeisances to all the assembled Vaishnavas. Um, uh, in fact, last year, we, we, we got the special blessing to be part of this wonderful Badra campaign. And uh, all the Bhakti Vriksha devotees were very excited uh, in taking part in this book distribution. And uh, uh, not just, uh, you know, the Prabhus and Matajis, but the children were also very much excited, especially the teens because they could see Srimad Bhagavatam is so fascinating because it's full of scientific things, you know. So um, uh, then we could understand that uh, children definitely need, uh, you know, this Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, so this is one way actually we can promote you know, and uh, many families would take uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. So it is for the entire family. It is not just for the parents, but it's for the entire family. And if the children are able to get this information from the young age, then they can very much, uh, you know, very nicely, they can be uh, guided and, uh, you know, um, trained in uh, Krishna consciousness from the very beginning. So here uh, in our congregation, we could see that now everyone is uh, wanting to have a set of Srimad Bhagavatam. And many devotees shared beautiful realizations about uh, reading Srimad Bhagavatam, I mean, studying Srimad Bhagavatam, and also distributing Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, we don't have much time to share all their realizations, but uh, I could feel that they are very excited for this year too because this is a very special year of Srila Prabhupada's 125th um, appearance uh, anniversary. And uh, we all know that the secret of success in spiritual life is to please our previous Acharyas. So what else could be the best opportunity because uh, this is Srila Prabhupada's very special year. And as I could see in Vrindavan Chandra Prabhu's presentation also, he mentioned this quote, like um, how Srila Prabhupada wanted uh, that every respectable person, you know, should have a set of Srimad Bhagavatam. So this is a very great inspiration. We, and uh, we feel that we will keep that as our... Uh, uh, goal of pleasing Srila Prabhupada by distributing as many sets and um, already we have shared with uh, within the community that the, the campaign is going to come and uh, everyone is excited. It is just that we want to hear the plans and today I could uh, see some of the plans what uh, Vrindavan Chandra Prabhu presented. Very exciting, um, very new ideas. Uh, certainly we are going to discuss with all our devotees here and uh, we are praying and seeking all your blessings that we can become an empowered instruments in uh, and distribute more sets of Bhagavatam and please Srila Prabhupada. So we request all of your blessings. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Yamaneshwari Mataji. That was very heartfelt, very nice. Thank you. We also like to welcome His Grace Vaishashika Prabhu, who also joined a few minutes, about five minutes ago. So thank you, Maharaj, for being us uh, online. Um, we would now like to move on to uh, Raksha Mataji, who's also here representing Bhakti Vriksha community from Northwest London, to also say a few words uh, for the, um, the community there and the devotees, um, and how, what did she think of the idea and the plan Vrindavan Chand Prabhu presented? 
Raksha Mataji, uh, over to you. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Uh, my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Vrindavan Chad Prabhu, Sudapa Prabhu, Divyanam Prabhu, and all senior devotees. Um, I just see this as a golden opportunity, and I very much look forward to working with all of our Bhakti Riksha devotees in giving Srila Prabhupada the best birthday present ever for his 125th anniversary, and hoping that everyone comes up with some innovative ideas. Uh, the uh, ideas presented so far by Vinda Pranjan Prabhu are absolutely fantastic, and we're hoping to add to that. And as Divyanam Prabhu says, uh, let's just not make it, let's smash it. So I very much look forward to working with all of you and all my Bhakti Riksha family in uh, smashing the goal. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Raksha Mataji. Thank you very much. Uh, last but not the least, uh, since Yamneshwari Mataji mentioned about the children and family, I'd like to go over to Diptesh Prabhu, who's very kindly been um, helping. Last year, he worked with a small group of children in training them on Srimad Bhagavatam, and, and they distributed nearly 30 sets of Srimad Bhagavatam in a very short period of time. Diptesh Prabhu has a lot going on in his personal life right now uh, with the family back home. But still, when I spoke to him about this request, he said, Divinam, I'll be there. So very grateful to you, Diptesh Prabhu, for taking this service um, and like to hear from you some words. What have you, what any early ideas you have, any goal you have set for, for, for the kids and how we can expand and share that training across all the groups, Bhakti Vrikshas and get everybody on board. It'll be nice to have 50 children on board this Yatra, but I'll over to you, Diptesh Prabhu. Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to the assembled devotees. Uh, thank you very much, Divyanam Prabhu, for making me part of the campaign. Uh, like everyone else, you approached me a few years ago, and uh, here I am trying to do some service to the best of my ability. So really inspired uh, by the Iskon Silicon Valley kids, the presentation that they did, they did last year, I uh, was shy. I'm still shy, but I, I, I said to the children that if you are in front of me, then at least I can do with you. And we embarked on a, on a small project with four children uh, uh, to distribute Srimad Bhagavatam. And uh, it, was, it was a bit of an interesting period. They, they, they trained really hard. They responded uh, very well. And we were able to distribute uh, across many countries uh, through the power of uh, technology. Uh, about 30 plus sets of Bhagavatam in a short period of time. It was intense and they, and, and they enjoyed it. So this year when I said, what should be our target? They were like, yeah, let's do 31. Uh, and I said, no, we need to go a little bit more. So I have, uh, uh, we, 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 we want to encourage uh, as many as uh, the devotees to come forward and the, and the children who wants to get the children involved over the age of nine to 10, obviously because of the commitment to do the presentation. Um, and we have uh, embarked on a goal of 51 Bhagavatams uh, this year across. Uh, and uh, yes, we want to do more. Let's see if we have more children, then obviously we will, we will grow our goals more. Uh, and please bless us because working with children is quite fun. It's entertaining, but also uh, it comes with its own challenges. You've got to constantly keep them motivated to do these things. And uh, what I really find, and I would, I would really contemplate uh, to all the leaders, uh, sorry, uh, to encourage to think, because when you have children presenting, you, you see a transformation and a good reciprocation. And, and I've seen uh, the heart, hearts melting uh, and, and, and they would reciprocate and we, would, we see a good response. So all we seek is an opportunity for these children to be in front of the, an audience. And, and I'm very confident that once they do that, that we, will, we, we have seen success uh, through them. Uh, so the major challenge for me personally with the children is we have exhausted all our nearly, uh, the immediate context last year. So we want to have more context through which we can present the children. In terms of expanding this, uh, I think we would have to reach out to other communities and children where there are children. I'm more than happy to train them or, or, or train the leaders through which they can train the children and uh, let the magic work this year and let's please feel a Prabhupada. In fact, when I saw Vrindavan Chandra Prabhu 125, my heart was saying, I'll just do 125. I don't know how, but let's just go for it. But I'm <laughs> sticking to 151 and please bless us that we can work with the children, the future of ISKCON to encourage them 
to be involved in this uh, wonderful mission. And also to them, they can grow their own Krishna consciousness and faith in Srimad Bhagavatam. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Diptesh Prabhu, for the wonderful service you do, you've taken on. So I request all the devotees, the group leaders, so tune in with Diptesh Prabhu uh, and we can begin to work uh, together. Um, and as uh, Yamneshwari Mataji said, I totally agree. The family uh, coming together and getting involved in this service is a great way. So without uh, any further delay, I'd like to go straight to Bhaktivedanta Manor and welcome uh, Mother Vishaka, uh, who's ever so encouraging, ever so uplifting and motivating us all the time and keeping us on our toes for our service to Srila Prabhupada and reminding us how the service of studying, reading and distributing a Prabhupada books is so, so dear to Srila Prabhupada. So thank you once again, Mother Vishaka, for giving us an amazing video, which is going to go out this evening. And I can assure you that video is going to catch on as a fire in the community because it's so nice and we are very grateful to that for that video. But we are very even more grateful that you are live here with us to hear from you some words of encouragement. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Divyanam Prabhu. Thank you for inviting me to be amongst you. And thank all of you for being here. Your enthusiasm is veritably contagious. It's a wonderful thing to catch your enthusiasm for pleasing Prabhupada with this service. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prastaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamaniti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharane Nirvase Sasunyavari Paskyata Desha Tarane Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shivasati Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Vansha Kalpa Tarubyas Cha, Kripa Sindhu Bhyeva Cha, Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo, Vaishnava Bhyo, Namo Namaha. Hare Krishna. So, yes, I'm, I feel very inspired and purified by being in your presence. And I must say that <clears throat> the service that you've taken up is so needed, so relevant in today's world where we're actually faced by a plague, this coronavirus, what it's doing in India is just completely horrific. We, we would read about plagues in the history books, but we never expected to be living in a plague. We thought that was something of the past. So how important it is for people to get this knowledge so that they know there's something beyond this body, something they can try to attain, as you call your campaign, go to Goloka. So this is something that everyone should have access to so that they can weather this calamitous storm that's engulfing the entire world at this time. And from our own experience, we can see that if we can absorb ourselves in the beautiful pastimes of the Bhagavatam, they're so engaging, they're so significant, they're so emotionally evocative, that uh, simply by reading these and rereading these, the stories become part of our own lives. We become absorbed so much that they become like a rich storehouse of experiences that we can draw upon in our daily lives, when we make decisions uh, in terms of our priorities, and they can actually change our values, change the direction of our lives, lighten our burden, our burden, and uh, actually soften our hearts. So these lessons that, uh, you know, if we just hear philosophy, sometimes it's hard to catch hold of. But when it's given to us in the form of these potent stories, these beautiful stories from the Bhagavatam, then they can actually change our attitude, change our behavior. It's uh, really, we just recently celebrated Ram Nomi. So I was thinking about Sita Devi being for 10 months, was it, in the kingdom of Sri Lanka? So there she was, she did not have the protection of her father, King Janaka, Neither her husband, the great personality of Godhead, Lord Ram, she was unprotected in that sense. Prabhupada repeatedly says the woman should be protected by her father, her husband, her son, 
She had no sons at that point. And yet she was protected by her faith, by her complete faith in Ram, that uh, she was untouched by Ravana, not only physically untouched, but in terms of his trying to brainwash her, if you will, she was unaffected because of her faith. So there's so much there that we can draw upon for ourselves, that we can be protected in this world, even though there is havoc all around us. And similarly, throughout the Bhagavatam, in Prahlad Maharaj, his implicit faith, his implicit faith in the Lord and Dhruva Maharaj's determination, certainly this is something that you'll need to meet your goal, this kind of determination. <laughs> Dhruva Maharaj was alone in the forest doing these austerities, but we are part of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's army and our austerity, which is our pleasure, is to serve Srila Prabhupada in this way by trying to distribute the books that he has so, so kindly gifted us. So it's, a, it's really a, a, a wonderful opportunity. And I'm so glad that you're rising to meet that opportunity. Krishna, when he comes, or his incarnations, most of his incarnations, because they come to annihilate godlessness they often, so often have weapons. Balaram has weapons, Parasaram has weapons, Lord Ram has weapons. But Lord Chaitanya's weapons are his parishads, his associates and the holy name. So all of you carrying the Bhagavatam, carrying the holy name, carrying Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you're the weapons of the Lord, part of his great army. So we want to see us successful in this attempt and perseverant, determined, as you are. I uh, just, I know we have a short time. So I was just also thinking when Prabhupada was on his departure bed in Vrindavan in November, 1977, at one point Jayadweta, who was then a brahmachari, said to him, reflected how much he's done in the 12 years that he was with us, how many books he had printed, you know, he had translated and were printed. And uh, Prabhupada said something that was like a Zen koan. He said, a little water wears the stone. A little water wears the stone. So if you have a stone you, and just a drop of water lands on it, you think, you know, what kind of drop of water do? It's ridiculous. But then there's another drop and another drop and another drop. And you come back after some time and that, that stone becomes concave where those drops are landing. So Prabhupada was saying that he would do a little bit every day. Every day he would do a little bit of translating and it became a library. So all of us a little bit every day, we can try to come closer to Krishna and try to give Krishna to others. And then there'll be remarkable results. A little water wears the stone. So let us all be drops of water and our hearts become softened and the hearts of those that we approach also become softened. And together we go to Goloka. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Thank Go you, Mother Vishaka. Thank you, Mother Vishaka. We'd like to just also hear a couple more words from you on this idea of uh, the leaders of Sankirtan of trying to reach out to 400 devotees from the community, everybody doing a little bit and uh, trying to either introduce to a new person or one set of Bhagavatam to a, an aspiring devotee. So just wanted, I know it came out in your video so strongly, but I wanted to hear from you. What, what are your thoughts about that and trying to work with everybody together? Yeah, thank you. It's a wonderful idea that we all, again, we all have a small goal as Mukunda Hari Prabhu was saying just one set of books to one person. And we have, how many months do we have to achieve that goal? So we, we have in total five months to distribute at least 400 sets, but we are looking to enroll 400 devotees in the next two months, May and June, Mother Vishaka, in two months. So it means we'll have three or four months, each person to distribute one set of Bhagavatams. So we can really meditate on that, that goal, each person individually, and try to cultivate an appreciation of the Bhagavatam. And that I was trying to emphasize the stories, if we appreciate them, naturally we want to introduce them to others. So they will also appreciate them and understand the value and the wealth 
that's there. And then once we can do that, this is the little water, where's the stone? Then we can offer this, this beautiful gift, this auspicious gift. And I think if that becomes a meditation for all of us, because in one sense, we're all leaders, right? The husband is the leader, the wife is the leader. The children are also leaders of each other. So <laughs> we're all leaders and all servants as well. So all of us together collectively can meet this goal, which is enormous, but if you break it down so that's one set per person, it becomes very, uh, not only desirable, but very doable and uh, exciting because we're a team. Much more exciting than if we're doing it individually. But this idea of teamwork that Vaisheshika Prabhu introduced rather than competing with each other, together we have this collective goal, worldwide goal, and uh, we can celebrate together once we reach it and surpass it. Thank you so much, uh, Mother Vishaka. Um, till today, uh, I wasn't sure whether, how is this gonna happen? But after hearing from you, Sutapa Prabhu, and seeing the confidence among the leaders in our community, I have no doubt that not only we will meet, but we will definitely surpass this goal. Um, and that, that comes in the form of your empowerment. So feel really privileged to be working under your esteemed leadership, Mother Vishaka. Thank you so much for those encouraging words. Um, feel really, really enlivened. Thank you. So, um, uh, dear devotees, uh, we would like to move uh, now uh, all the way to ISKCON uh, of Silicon Valley or uh, San Francisco uh, in the Association of His Grace by Shushika Prabhu, who on a very short notice, very nicely and kindly agreed to give us his association, even though for a short time. But thank you, Maharaj, for gracing this occasion and sharing uh, some words of encouragement for the devotees on the plan. Vindavan Chand Prabhu did a beautiful presentation um, on how we could work together and make this 125th anniversary of Srila Prabhupada's appearance even more special uh, with this wonderful campaign. And just one thing I wanted to mention when, when Mother Vishaka said about uh, the you know each devotee getting involved, when we were coming up with this idea, we thought, ha let's have a think of how many devotees are there in ISKCON. And if we could mobilize each of those devotees, I mean, then thousands is probably less. We'll probably go into much bigger numbers. But hopefully one day that can happen. Bhaktivedanta Manor is, is trying to take uh, that leap in trying to reach out to as many community members as possible uh, and everybody doing a little bit, Maharaj. So thank you again, Maharaj, for giving us your association. Over to you, Maharaj. I have my humble obeisances to Srila Prabhupada, to Her Grace Vishaka Devi, the leader of the Bhaktivedanta Manor, to all the great leaders who are present here today, Thank you very much, Divyanam Prabhu, for being a catalyst for the Sankirtan movement. There's no better place to be. And if this is not short notice for me, we're on call 24 hours. Please just let me know any time, day or night. I'm, your, uh, I'm eager to be in the game since this is uh, near the end. Uh, <clears throat> I have a few lessons to share today to hopefully add some uh, inspiration, to give some inspiration to the team. One is that uh, the distribution of Srimad Bhagavatams is a tangible service. It's unassailable. There are no Vaishnavas in the world that will object to the distribution of Bhagavatam, or very few. Probably somebody could muster some type of objection, but it would be uh, overridden very quickly. And um, so why are we do why are we taking this up? Uh, one of the ways that uh, <clears throat> book distribution is is helpful is that we're able to interact with people who are committed to the material world at the present time. And by introducing something so tangible as Srimad Bhagavatam, we get to watch like a chemical experiment. When you add Bhagavatam into their lives, what happens? How do they become unglued from their attachment to the material world? That perhaps is the most uh, helpful experiment for any of us to watch, as then it uh, builds our own faith in the power of the Bhagavatam. As we read it, 
as Vishaka Devi was saying that we're reading it and we're also getting the benefit. And then when we give it to other people, just as when people take a set of Bhagavatams into their homes, it's really a big decision because what people put in their homes, especially books, they represent something like this is what I'm into. In fact, if if people have guests coming over to their house, they're always careful to put their their most uh, prestigious books on top. That's what they'll put on the uh, coffee table. And if they're online nowadays, more likely they'll they'll display behind them. This is what I'm reading now. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I'm into. Even if they're not reading it, they'll still put the they'll put the cover so it's showing because everyone everyone will look and say, oh yeah, that's who that person is. So it's no small feat to convince somebody to take a set of Bhagavatams and put it in their home. Just the putting in their home is a commitment on their part that Krishna has entered the house. And if anybody else walks in the house and they, hey, what's that? It's like, all right, I admit it. I'm a Hare Krishna. I'm, uh, you, know, you, you can't get around it. It's, it's such a, a um, indomitable force that comes in uh, to people's homes. And um, I always marvel at uh, how Sankirtan challenges us to to inspire other people to take that into the uh, to, to take Krishna into their homes. And it's voluntary. I read this letter that Prabhupada wrote just a note to uh, a manager in Mayapur. He said, I have received one complaint from an Indian devotee at Mayapur uh, that he has that he is mal maltreated by our American devotees. Kindly inquire into this matter and do the needful. Either Indian or foreign, whoever joins us, they are not under any obligation. Our only tie is love of Godhead. It should be our definite policy that nobody is ill-treated, that he may go away. We recruit a person to join us after spending gallons of blood. Everyone comes for reformation. You cannot expect everyone to be perfect. Rather, it is our duty to make everyone perfect as far as possible. Prabhupada's approach uh, to individual spontaneous voluntary meaning create an environment where people want to do this is a great challenge we have to be up to the task spiritually and i've always appreciated how when we give people the inspiration to take bhagavatam but we allow them to do it voluntarily there's we leave it to them and then they make that choice it's it's the most uh, eventful process as when somebody actually decides when they're given the choice and they say, yes, I want to do this. It's like an atomic reaction. And so that that's one opportunity that we have is to see for ourselves that um, we inspire other people to take Bhagavatam. Another um, lesson in uh, just completing a, a vow like this and growing I was watching in my back garden, backyard garden since last year, I planted some Swiss chard. And um, most of the garden came and went after the season. There were two Swiss chards growing. One of them grew all right, but the other one was um, besieged by little creatures. I think they were vegan creatures, probably snails who were uh, really chomping down on this one uh, Swiss chard that was growing back there. And I just left it for dead. Uh, every time I'd go back there, it was practically demolished. But uh, lo and behold, after all the other <laughs> vegetables were gone, this one uh, that, that was so beaten down, it came back again because it just it kept trying and it, it uh, found its season and somehow or other the snails died down and they were able it was able to to grow up strong the way it is now it's the only vegetable i have in my garden right now because i haven't planted yet and so i was just thinking about how uh, in our own practice uh, taking the the mood of a drop a day just keep trying keep watering that's um, no matter how much you're getting beat up no matter how much you're getting pulled down, keep 
keep watering, keep trying, because you will break through like the Swiss chard. It'll, you'll have your day and you'll be able to offer the result to Krishna. And then one other lesson I saw from the uh, garden today was the ants. I like ant philosophy. I notice how they communicate. I don't know if they're blind or not. I have somebody, maybe an entomologist here, if that's who looks at ants, can tell me if they're blind. But they do bump into each other as a form of communication, I'm told. I don't know how everyone knows that, but it seems to be true if you watch ants. At every, every couple steps, they bump into the other ant as if to pass on some code and say, you know, uh, this is what we're <laughs> reminding everybody of the mission. This is what we're doing. Bump, 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 every, all the way along the line, very quickly, but they, they pass on some message. And each one of them carries a tiny little piece. I was watching them and I was thinking about this 400, at least 400 devotees, each carrying one Bhagavatam set. And they're like little ants. All they carry is a, a little, sp a, like a half a grain of rice, smaller than that, or a little tiny grain of sand. But there's so many of them coming and going that it, uh, it, it's amazing what they do. They're so industrious. I wish we were as organized as the ants. So we could take ant philosophy in this marathon by co communicating, cooperating towards a worthy goal. That's worth it unto itself just to have the goal, just so we can see what we can make of ourselves through communication and cooperation. So the Bhagavatam uh, is the means through which we change the world. Tadvag visargo janatago viplavo. We, we uh, create a revolution by the power of the Bhagavatam. And uh, my friend Akuranath Prabhu always used to lament, why is it not more popular? Why do the, intellect, uh, the intellectuals in society, the intelligentsia not appreciate it? for what it is. We hear anecdotally that sometimes academics, they'll hear of the grammar within the Sanskrit of the Bhagavatam and they'll marvel at it and say, "Why well, this is more, this is hundreds of times, thousands of times more eloquent than Shakespeare. Uh, it's, it's more subtle than, than, the, than Latin grammar and so forth. What a culture. It's, it's the it's the culture of the spiritual world. And the way that it gets transferred from the spiritual world to this world is the work we're doing. We're the ants. We carry it and make sure that it gets placed and that um, people are voluntarily reading it because they're getting inspired. And then they're watering so that uh, no matter how, how beat down they or we look at any time, if we keep taking the message of the Bhagavatam, like my little Swiss chard, which is my inspiration in life now. I chant to it back there. Say, I'm going to be like that Swiss chard. No matter how chewed up I am, no matter how beat down I am, I'm going to keep taking water and just uh, depend on the sun, depend on the soil, and keep growing. You could do this easily. 400 actually is for you, for this yatra. You're so mighty. You're so heroic, this yatra. Every time I tune in, uh, all of you are so determined and organized and eloquent. It's, it's a, you're a famous yatra. 400 is, is, uh, is absolutely doable. You could do it in one day, actually, with your hands behind your back, uh, with the power that you have there. I'm fully confident that you'll smash 400, not just surpass, but smash it. And it's worthwhile and we can keep smashing goals until we're asked to step out of the game. So the music will stop at any time. And uh, it's a good place to be absorbed in distributing Srimad Bhagavatam. Thanks for letting me poke my head in on this glorious event. I'll be uh, um, on standby 24 hours a day, anytime uh, that we can help in any way from this side of the stone. Please let us know. And we'll do what we can. Om Tat Sat. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Uh, um, we would, if you don't mind staying in for five minutes, we'll come back to you for a concluding prayers for our yatra. Uh, but before that, I just wanted to take an opportunity to 
mention that uh, we have Nirmal Prabhu who's worked uh, to create a beautiful Google form uh, where the devotees can enroll themselves in uh, by trying to just trying to commit to Srila Prabhupada that they would like to distribute one at least one set of Bhagavatam. Uh, this Badra Purnima, and the form has been shared by Vindavan Chand Prabhu on the chat box. So, um, and all the leaders at the manor are going to lead from the front. Uh, and to begin with, Mother Vishaka, our dear president, she's going to definitely has already nominated herself. And uh, all the other devotees are going to come forward, there is no doubt. Um, so, I request uh, all the devotees to please sign up. Uh, auspicious day, it marks the day of our Maha Maha inauguration of Badra campaign at Bhakti Vedanta Manor. Uh, very soon, uh, Keshav Gokulanand Prabhu will be sharing a wonderful flyer which he's put together to encourage the devotees to come forward and sign up for this campaign. So thank you, Keshav Gokulanand Prabhu, for all your wonderful effort. Um, I know it's been a difficult year for you, but uh, all your services are very much appreciated, Keshav Prabhu, and we look forward to serving with you together. Um, I want to uh, thank all the other devotees who we could not invite today to speak. Ashish Prabhu from East London, uh, a great warrior, really uh, liaising, working together. Um, I want to thank Bharti Mataji, who picked up book distribution. Uh, she's been doing for many years, but especially last year, she felt really close to this service and now wants to fully, fully uh, help. Avinash Prabhu, who's leading the mentorship of Mukunda Hari Prabhu from Sankirtan Perspective. Thank you, Avinash Prabhu, for tuning in. Chandra Chaitanya Prabhu and Prema Vilasini Mataji are Idea Seeds website distributors behind the scenes, working, taking the orders from the website and sending out the books. Uh, they are also ready for distribution of the Bhagavatam sets. Thank you, Chandra Chaitanya Prabhu, for joining in. Thank you, Chandrika Mataji. Dumduman Prabhu, how can we forget driving around the trucks of Bhagavatam last year? Prabhu, we would need to move some more trucks again this year, Dumduman Prabhu. And thank you for your wonderful service and ideas of reaching out to VIPs, ministers, parliament, everybody. So we look forward to some of those ideas again this year, Dumduman Prabhu. Thank you so much. Thank you, Diptesh Prabhu, for your contribution. Hema Mataji, as already her mind is unstoppable from last year, Bhadra. She's already thinking to invite so many people for the Yatra, for the Katha, to popularize Bhagavatam and reach out to so many people. Thank you, Hema Mataji. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, Nirmal Prabhu is there, Nitai Mataji, thank you. Palika Mataji, our, our real champion all the way from Bengal, the land of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. She is such a stalwart Sankirtan devotee, distributed so many sets last year in Bhadra. So really looking forward to working with you, Palika Mataji. Thank you, Prabhuta Mataji, for sponsoring, I think, more than 20 sets last year. We are looking forward to working with you again. Thank you, Radha Khan Prabhu, for tuning in. Uh, Shabani Mataji and Girish Prabhu, thank you for opening your house uh, in hosting Shila Prabhupada books almost a year now, actually. So thank you very much. Thank you uh, to Anukul Seva Prabhu, Shama Mohini Mataji, our BBD stalwarts, uh, really uh, helping us to go to the world with Bhagavatam. So without both of you, we wouldn't be able to do what we are doing. Very grateful to you all. Uh, thank you, uh, Vindarika, for joining us and Sridham from uh, at the back and inspiring all of us and all the other devotees who I can't name, but very grateful and looking forward to serving in this campaign with all of you and making it a real, real resounding success for the world actually. Uh, because some of the ideas which are coming here, I, I can already feel the, there are many devotees. Amanda Vikrama Prabhu have joined in from Ireland. He's wanting to try something there. Many devotees are wanting me, wanting me to do what we are doing at the manor. So really grateful to, to all of you. Um, so Vindavan Chand Prabhu, do you have anything you want to mention uh, being being our leader for this Yatra, for the Gomatsya project, before I hand over to His Grace Vaishashika Prabhu for concluding prayers? The only thing I would like to say, I'm, I'm feeling so inspired and ready to go. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. Uh, Guru Maharaj, over to you for last concluding words and, and a prayer for our Yatra uh, so all the le leaders and all the devotees can come together uh, and uh, try to revolutionize this Srimad Bhagavatam in the land of United Kingdom, Maharaj. Okay, I signed up for one set on your on your chart. I go. Thank you, Maharaj. <laughs> so you all better do one too. We'll do that. Okay, thanks. Dear Srila Prabhupada, Dear Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Dear Sri Sri Panchatattva, if you so desire, 
please empower our entire team to expand the glories of Srimad Bhagavatam for the police, Srila Prabhupada, and the disciplic succession by distributing at least 400 sets of Srimad Bhagavatam by Bhadra Purnima. Please enliven the devotees and the recipients of, who are distributing Srimad Bhagavatam, the recipients who will take them into their lives. And please help us always remember the importance of Vaishnava Association to cooperate and to glorify the devotees and to not always say everything that's on our mind. Thank you for considering our quest. Om Tat Sat. Hare Krishna. Gaur Premanande. Hari Hari Bo. Karan Prabhu, could we please unmute all the audiences uh, so we can, everybody Everyone have... Everyone who the... agrees with that prayer in part or in whole, please unmute, put on your camera and say Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna, everybody. Thank you. So much, everyone, for joining in. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you, Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you Prabhu. It was wonderful. Hare very Krishna. inspiring. Thank you. Very, very inspiring. Hare. Wonderful. Very inspiring. Thank you so much. Hi, Hare Krishna. Hare Mukunda Hare Prabhu looks like we will smash it, Prabhu, this year again. Already I'm feeling it. <laughs> Is the program been recorded? Yes, yes, it is was recorded. And Karan Prabhu, thank you so much for your wonderful service from School of Bhakti. Uh, Prabhu will put it onto the YouTube link and share it with us, Palika Mataji, and I'll share it with you. Thank you so much for tuning in, Mataji. Thank you. Thank you very much. I beg forgiveness if I have not mentioned anybody's name. Uh, the list was so long. Uh, and your offense, you know, relieving back pain helps you to keep... Prabhuji, Yorkshire is ready to come to get the Dark, books. Thank you, Varsha Mataji. Please sign up the form. It's there. And you can put yeah, not one, you can put 10 sets if you like, uh, if you want to distribute Once I've sold the house, uh, it will be. But at the okay, moment, great. I'm ordering one. So please Dark, pray thank and you, bless Mataji. me. Thank you so much. And bless me, please. You're already blessed by Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Varsha Mataji. Thank Hare you. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Smita Mataji, for joining in. Thank you, Yamneshwari Mataji, once Thank again. You. Thank you. For your wonderful leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ashish Prabhu. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Dumduman Prabhu. Devya Gaurangi Mataji, thank you so much for your wonderful service. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Malvika Mataji, for joining. Nirmal Prabhu, thanks for joining. Thank you again, Karan Prabhu. Hari Bol. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna.